I'm back. Today I want to talk to you about blind loyalty. I'm riding with you right or wrong. I've been really thinking about blind loyalty because throughout the whole P. Diddy thing, I've heard Jason Derulo, Boosie, and a few others come out and say, man, where his friends at? I ain't never seen so many black people happy for a downfall. I don't hear none of them who was at Diddy shit, toasting with that champagne every year, having speeches with me. Ain't nobody speak up for this man or nothing. When you're on top of the world, it's a celebration. When you're on the bottom, it's a denialation. What the people that was going to them parties, drinking with him, partying with him? Why nobody speaking out on his behalf? I heard another dude on YouTube. You gonna ride with your partner right or wrong? Well, to me, that's blind loyalty. So let me let me quickly tell you a story. I'm not gonna hold you long. I'm tired. Been a long day. I had a partner. Went to school with him. We gonna call him Little Alex. Me, Little Alex, we met each other in the ninth grade. Cool dude, man. We knew some of the same folks. He was from that bottom of Oak Cliff, that north side. I'm from that south side. But we hooked up in high school over some familiar circumstances. Actually, I mean, I'm ashamed to tell you the circumstances, but we both had been dealing with the same young lady. We both ended up having to go to see the doctor. All right? So, fast forward. I get to know the guy, man, he my partner. We hang out every single day. Now time passed. Time passed. I don't see this guy for some years. We saw each other all through high school and uh, we went our separate ways. I went on to do what I was doing. A lot of my partners went to the penitentiary, him included. And, you know, I changed my life. I hook up with this guy again. I'm in Oak Cliff, Keystone Polk, at the grocery store, buying some food, and I see him, and man, we used to rap together, and I'm talking about real rap together, writing songs, and uh, he didn't have a ride, he was at the bus stop, I took him home, so we was reunited, man, and we started hanging together just like time had never passed. Now, mind you, this dude was connected with some, with some dudes, man, I'm talking about some hard hitters. Some raw dogs at that, at that bottom. And then, you know, I was connected with some raw dudes. I was connected with some, some movers and shakers in the city. That was our connection. Besides that mutual young lady. So, man, we connect. Time passed. I think he got locked up again. I moved out the city. I see him again, man, in Farm Ridge. Some apartments in, in Oak Cliff. I'm over there hollering at one of my cousins. We see him, and I'm like, man. What up, Al? I ain't seen you in a long time, boy. And uh, we chopped it up, man, hung out, drank, smoked, whatever we did. And uh, again, we click clack, start hanging out every day. At the time, I had a little studio in South Dallas with my partner. Well, it was my partner's studio, but we was going in trying to bring in business. So again, we had this connection with rapping. Okay, so I, I hook up with the guy, man, and uh, he ended up being in a halfway house. So when he was in the halfway house, we had uh, recorded a few songs. Songs was hidden. We had went out of town to perform a few of them, but we stayed in Texas. Didn't violate his probation or parole. And I introduced him to my partners. So now he connected to who I'm connected to. He's seeing them sometimes when I'm not seeing them. But, you know, he gossiping about them sometimes. He telling me they, they stealing money, so forth, so on. Okay, that's just who he is. I ain't bothered with it. He called me up. I was in Fort Worth at the time. I was driving to South Dallas to go to the studio. We had a show. So we was trying to put together our show CD at the studio. And he said, man, he had a severe headache. And then that his back was hurting real bad. And so he was walking real stiff, real tender. So we get to the we get to the studio, man. He's still walking like that. 
all my partners are asking him. I'm asking him, hey, man, just drink this beer. You know, drink some of this whiskey. You know, he, he firing up or whatever it is. Hoping he, he feel better, right? At the end of the studio session, you know, he asked me to drop him off at home. Well, I got to drive back to Fort Worth. He right there, no cliff. Cool. So I dropped him off at home, and we didn't say anything else about it. Next Saturday, we go to the studio again. This dude back hurting, everything hurting again. But this time, man, he like, hey, Trip, can you pick me up at my house in Oak Cliff? I said, man, I, I thought OG Mike was going to pick you up. He said, nah, can you, I want you to pick me up. I want you to, uh, I want to introduce you to the, uh, to the people in the halfway house. I want to introduce you to these folks. So I know what he was saying. I knew that he was saying that that 6'5 dude had been in his bed. I didn't know if he had been tampering with him or whatever they had going, but it ran me hot. And let me tell you why, and I ain't on no gangster stuff. Man, these are single beds. You know how the kind you had when you was a teenager if you had a bed? Or, or a single pallet. So, I pull up. I'm strapped up. I know I ain't probably supposed to be that in the halfway house, but I'm strapped up. I go in there strapped up. And uh, knock on the door. He introduced me to the head of the house. He's an essay, Mexican. So I'm like, ¿Qué pasa? You know, and uh, what's up? He let me on in. So then my partner, Lele, planned it off. He's like, yeah, man, this this my partner B that I be doing to the studio with that I told you about. Uh, but man, I want to introduce him to everybody. So, you know, I don't know why they want to meet me in a halfway house, but it's all good. I'm strapped up. He had told me that the, the Mexican man had been handling them too, that he had pulled a knife on them the other day, you know, and they was fighting over like the dishes or something. He had said he was going to kill them all or whatever. So two reasons. I'm pulling up for two people. Now, this blind loyalty. I go into the highs. The Mexican dude was cool. So I go to the kitchen. Then he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me show you around. So he's showing me the rooms. It had about four rooms. It had two beds to a room. And again, they like them teenage beds. I don't remember what you call them, single beds, whatever. And he was like, this is our room. And so I, was, I said, who room? Uh, me and the 6'5 six, dude, 6'6 six, six dude. That's his bed. This is my bed over here. Okay. And so I'm thinking, I said, so so what, man? So the dude was drunk or something? Uh, you know, I mean, how did he end up in your bed? That you told me last week. I, I, I still don't understand that. He said, man, I don't, again, I don't know. So I check every room. I just, you know, I'm giving myself the tour at this point. I'm giving myself the tour around the halfway house. I'm checking every room. I'm trying to see if he's there. And matter of fact, I didn't see him. He wasn't there. Coast was clear. He asked the Mexican dude, hey, man, what such and such at? Oh, man, he left to go such and such. Well, whoop do whoop. So I waited in the kitchen another 45 minutes to an hour, just sitting there, because I want to see body. You know, I want to see what he talking about for real. We didn't get to get into no altercation because he never showed up. So I said, Aunt man, you know, we got to do a show. We got to get to the studio. So after waiting about an hour, hour, 20 minutes, man, we go ahead and head to South Dallas. I'm going to pause it right there to say that was blind loyalty. I don't know what's going on in this halfway house. I hear about the bickering. I hear somebody in his bed. I see him walking funny. And I'm willing to crash out. I'm in the halfway house. You ever heard of somebody throwing rocks at the penitentiary? I'm in the halfway house strapped up. Ready to do what got to be done. If I couldn't have got any understanding with the Mexican, that would have been a problem. And if I couldn't have got any understanding with the dude that wanted to be in his bed, that would have been a problem. Oh, yeah. And let me... Failed to, I did fail to mention. He did mention that the 6566 six, six dude was gay. So that was another red flag. And you're going to understand it more in a minute when I tell you the other piece of the story.